Welcome to Resource PNG. We begin with some exciting news from the oil and gas sector. Oil Search Limited has announced a record profit for the year 2014. The company announced a net profit after tax of 353.2 million US dollars or about 880 million kina. This is 72% higher than in 2013. The successful commencement of LNG production and export from the PNG LNG project was highlighted as a major contributing factor to the overall financial performance of oil search. In fact, the company's strong result was driven by a near tripling of production following the commencement of LNG sales in May 2014. In addition, improved oil production from the company's existing Moran and Kutubu oil fields has ensured continued positive performance. Resource PNG spoke with Peter Botton, Managing Director of Oil Search Limited. The 2014 full year results for Oil Search Limited were made known earlier this week. As expected, the company announced a profit, a healthy profit in fact, which demonstrated the worth of the company. Uh, obviously production was impacted by uh, the successful delivery of uh, PNG, PNG LNG and that flowed on to record production, around 19 uh, million barrels of oil equivalent produced uh, in 2014 which is um, uh, more than triple what uh, we produced in 2013. And obviously our core profit, um, uh, excluding significant items, was uh, around 480 million US dollars, which was up 135% on 2013. And even accounting for significant items, uh, the profit after that, uh, after they were re uh, deducted, was 353 million. Uh, again, up about 72%. So it's a, a strong set of numbers, which leads to a strong balance sheet, uh, but also to um, ensure that uh, we weather the storm that uh, is uh, on us at the moment, which is low oil prices and uh, much tighter margins. So uh, 14 is, uh, is a good year, but uh, uh, 2015 is certainly more challenging. Well, we've, as you know, we've been in P&G for some 86 years. Um, almost all our assets and value is in Papua New Guinea. So to be part of a transformational project such as P&G LNG is, a, is great. There were many sceptics uh, in the business that said uh, P&G couldn't deliver. And uh, I'm pleased to say we collectively have proven them wrong. So uh, uh, it's good that uh, the benefits are uh, are flowing and are flowing to the country, uh, albeit that uh, unfortunately it coincides with a with a lower oil price regime, which uh, will impact revenues uh, obviously in 2015. Shareholders of Oil Search, which include the government of Papua New Guinea, will be pleased with Oil Search's 2014 full year results, with the company also announcing a dividend payment of 14 US cents per share, three and a half times higher than 2013 dividends. However, key challenges remain in 2015, not least the current downturn in world crude oil prices, which at present is trading at around the 50 US dollar per barrel mark. According to Oil Search Managing Director Peter Botton, the current downturn in world oil prices have forced the company to re-examine its operations to now focus on the company's high-returning core LNG growth projects. Among these is the development of the Pinyang gas field as well as the Elk Antelope gas field in Gulf Province. The first issue with Pinyang is to understand the resources, how much gas uh, there is in the field. And uh, that requires us to drill at least one, maybe two more holes on Pinyang to understand the resource base, which could then potentially um, underwrite uh, uh, further, further LNG uh, development and expansion. But uh, the first thing to do is to understand the resource. And I must say the same thing is happening at our other uh, set of fields uh, at El Cancelo. So drilling there this year is also very important to understand how big the, uh, the gas field is there. Well, certainly uh, uh, we've made a choice to uh, move forward uh, 
and uh, bring the joint venture together uh, with our partners and work with our partners to optimise uh, any potential development uh, in El Cantalo. We think that's sensible. Um, further court activities uh, would have delayed uh, progress on the project and that's clearly not acceptable to us. It's not in anybody's interest to continue that exercise. Uh, we're now uh, uh, working closely and will continue to work closely with our partners to evaluate the size and shape of the elk antelope field, define what we can uh, develop at elk antelope and then hopefully move to development over the next few years. Um, certainly uh, Total has mentioned a commitment to develop sometime uh, in uh, 2017 uh, and uh, obviously uh, that's subject to uh, reserve confirmation and a lot of engineering uh, and economic financial uh, work uh, but we remain very uh, very optimistic that uh, that we can actually deliver that in that time frame. 2015 looks to be an exciting year for oil search and no doubt many industry analysts will be keeping a close tab on the company's activities over the next 12 months. I think it's going to take a number of years for us to uh, see a uh, return of the oil prices towards uh, the $100 mark, which we frankly have been accustomed to over the last few years. Uh, in reality, uh, uh, there is a, a very uh, difficult uh, supply and demand balance across the world for oil, and um, while that continues as an over, oversupply situation, the prices will remain uh, um, lower than we've seen in the past few years. I think that'll take a number of years to wind through the system, but the positive about Papua New Guinea is that our oil business and our LNG business is world class. It does represent um, excellent uh, investment opportunities even at low oil prices. And I'm certain that Oil Search and its partners will continue to invest and invest very heavily in PNG to further build our business there. So some hard times ahead, but uh, but equally some real opportunities to further build the business and uh, grow, even at these low prices. You're watching Resource PNG. Coming up, we speak with Mujay Wera from Octedi Mining Limited. Stay with us. Welcome back to Resource PNG. Since officially commencing operations in 1981, the Octedi Mine in Western Province has played a significant part in the economy of Papua New Guinea. And over the course of this time, the mine has also played a part in developing the next generation of leaders within the mining, petroleum and energy sector. In November 2014, the OTML board announced the appointment of Mujay Wera as the Chief Operating Officer to lead OTML. Previous to his new appointment, Mr. Wera was OTML's General Manager, Employee and External Relations and has had a long career with OTML in operations, occupational health and safety and community relations. Mr. Wera took up his role on the 1st of December 2014 and has been working alongside OTML Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer Nigel Parker, who retires at the end of this month, to ensure a smooth transition in the leadership of OTML. Resource PNG recently spoke with Mr. Wera. Hello everyone and welcome to Resource PNG. Today we have Mushe Wera from Octeri Mining Limited. Thank you Mr. Wera. Thank you. Congratulations on your new appointment as Chief Operating Officer. Uh, we understand you're taking over the Managing Director acting in February. How are you feeling at this moment? I am very excited about being given this opportunity to take on, take on this role and I, I, I thank the board for having the confidence in me and also I commend uh, Nigel Parker for uh, putting me up to take over from him. Now on top of that, you're the first Papua New Guinean. I mean, what does this mean? How do you feel? I think it means a lot for the mining industry and and in, and especially for Octedi after you know 34 years of operation uh we now have a national uh, manager to to manage the mine uh, going forward so uh, I think it provides the you know opportunity for uh, for other mines to follow follow suit 
Now you've taken over a very challenging time. What are your key priorities? Well, at the moment is to get our production uh, uh, up as soon as possible. We, we flooded the, the current center pit, which is our main ore body. Um, we, we need to get access to the center pit as quickly as possible and start uh, mining the ore from there. Um, so that's one, one thing that we need to focus on quickly. The other thing is to continue to um, contain our costs as much as possible while we, we go through this uh, lean period. Now you've been with Octedi for a long time. What have been your highlights? I started with Octedi in uh, 1987 uh, on the graduate program and um, I've, I've been able to uh, move through different um, departments uh, across Octedi into health and safety, into community development, infrastructure support, mine closure planning, uh, and then later on to uh, general management role, looking after the hospital. Um, so I've had a um, fair, you know, um, I guess, um, move across the organization. Do you expect the mine life extension to stabilize? The mine life extension has been approved uh, by the state. And as of 1st of January 2015 uh, to, to December 2025. So that, that's our mine, uh, mine continuation period. Um, so during that time, um, we will continue to produce oil and yeah, generate uh, revenue for, for the company and also benefits to our stakeholders. Can you expand a little bit on the information? What do you see in the projected years to come? The first six years is going to be very tight um, for, for the company um, and we've been the board has challenged us to look at how we can bring forward uh, some of the potential targets uh, so that we can increase our, increase our production and, and generate uh, positive uh, profits from it. Now you've addressed the 13th PNG Mining Conference. What are your key messages? I think the mining industry is going through a tough time with uh, declining metal prices and in Octedi's case also um, lower head grades. And so the key message uh, for, for Octedi is that you know, we, we need to produce as much copper as we can and look at uh, continuing to reduce our, our cost base. Um, the other key message is that we need to continue to develop our people because our people is our, our success and our future. So we're putting in, um, we're investing in our human capital development with a partnership with uh, JK Tech, which is a commercial arm of the University of Queensland. So it's going to be exciting for, for our people going forward. Now, Octedi is known for its high profile environmental accidents. What is Octedi doing? What has it been doing in the last 12 months to address waste management? Well, we, we take uh, our environmental management very seriously. And um, since 2001, we've spent over one billion U.S. dollars uh, to look at how we can uh, reduce the, the impact of our operation on the on the environment and on the livelihood livelihood of our communities. So we have a number of um, programs that we have in place, including the uh, 60 million U.S. dollars a year uh, dredging operation uh, in the Lower Octedi. We're looking at uh, we've been putting a limestone through our mill again to reduce uh, the uh, reduce acid rock drainage from occurring. Uh, so there's there's a number of uh, initiatives that we've undertaken. So um, and so far the results have been has, have been positive. Is there anything you'd like to take away from the 13th PNG Mining Conference? Well, just uh, listening to what the other uh, companies are doing, uh, mining companies, especially in these uh, difficult times and. Uh, learning, uh, learning from them and looking at what we can also uh, introduce to, again, uh, remain uh, viable as a, as a mining company going forward. Mr. Ware, would you like to share a special message to our viewers? Yeah, Octel is a great company. We've been in, in existence for 34 years and I know the company will continue to um, remain uh, in operation for well over well after 2025. Um, the, the, the operation has affected the livelihoods of um, our communities, over 125,000 people uh, from the mine site all the way down to uh, the, the mouth of the Fly River. And 
as a responsible company, we want to ensure that um, our, our performance will continue to bring benefits uh, to, to those communities. Um, we've started that process with the uh, Octetti Development Foundation, uh, do implementing sustainable programs, but it is only a start and there's a huge, uh, sorry, there's a long way to go. Uh, we still have our communities living in the dark. We still have mothers having to walk five or six days to find water. We still have um, uh, people dying of uh, curable diseases. Uh, we still have children who are not at school. Um, we have uh, run down you know, schools and aid posts. And Octedi exists because we have to su uh, support the communities who have given the consent for the operations to continue. So we have an obligation there. You're watching Resource PNG. After the break, we speak with Barrick Gold Limited. Stay with us. Welcome back to Resource PNG. Barrick Gold Limited currently hold a 95% share in the Pogera Gold Mine in Enga Province. In 2014, the Pogera mine produced 493,000 ounces of gold. Resource PNG had a chance to sit down with Anthony Smare, General Manager, Corporate and Legal for Barrick Gold Limited, and discuss some issues on their operations in Papua New Guinea. Tonight on the show, we have Anthony Smare, who is the Corporate and Legal General Manager from Barrick Gold Corporation. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, Thank on you the show. very much, Tukana. We'll be talking a bit about Pogera and Having said that, what's the situation currently like at Pagera? The situation is actually quite good. We've had a great year this year. We've had some problems with some load order issues that have affected mm -hmm. our power lines. Uh, but apart from that, the mines had a pretty good year, despite you know, challenges with falling uh, gold price, mm -hmm. rising costs in PNG, okay. the issues with the Highlands Highway. Um, but it's been a good year. It's been a, uh, you know, a much better year than what we anticipated. These factors that you mentioned as challenges, uh, how have they impacted uh, Pogera? Well, the gold price is a, is a big problem because we had very strong gold prices for, for a couple of years. And okay. we've experienced you know, a 30% fall in gold price in the last I guess, 18 months. And it's meant that the miners had to focus on costs, cutting back on costs, being more efficient. Uh, and we've, we've seemed to have mastered that pretty well this year. Okay. Um, that's really been the biggest impact. The problems with the Highlands Highway are seasonal with the high rainfall. Uh, it continues to be a problem, but you know, it's part of the process of managing okay. you know, so operating what's the, PNG. What's the production like uh, at the moment? The uh, production is around just over 500,000 ounces for the year. Okay. Uh, we are above budget for the year, so we've had a good year um, in the sense that you know, our staff have been working very well and we've mastered a lot of the challenges that we normally have. Uh, so we're about budget for the year, which is really good. Okay. Now, the mine has been open since 1990. Mm -hmm. um, do you predict uh, a longer lifespan, or do you think uh, the mine... At the moment, um, the moment we're looking at probably life up to 2022. Okay. Uh, it all depends really on uh, what happens with the gold price. The gold price goes up, it brings more ounces that are a bit more expensive to mine, brings them into the equation, which means we might be able to push the life out. If the gold price keeps falling, mm -hmm. then we will have to, to uh, it eliminate some of the higher cost sort of ounces. So at the moment, we're hopeful that we will mine till 20, 2020 or 2022. Okay. Um, but a lot of that will depend upon what happens with the gold price and also if we find more ounces okay. around the mine. Um, to the social aspect of the mine, mm -hmm. uh, Pagara being one of the largest townships in the country, a lot of the individuals that reside there are dependents on the mine. Uh, what are the challenges that you face with respect to that? We have a, we have a significant issue with in-migration. So if you look at the landowner population in Pogra, we're probably talking maybe eight or 9,000 people. Um, but depending on the government authorities that you speak to, mm -hmm. Pogra's population might be around the 50,000 uh, people mark. Most of those people are from outside the Pogra district. So okay. The difficulty with Pogra is Pogra is at around 2,200, 2,300 uh, meters elevation. And you can only grow, uh, you can't really grow sweet potato at that elevation. We're right mm -hmm. on the border mark. So the ability for the valley to support agriculture, to support that population is, is very limited. So they're totally dependent on the mine. Okay. We can only employ you know, maybe 3,000 people. Um, so there's significant pressure on, 
on mine and the government and other businesses in the area to, to try to support them. And that's where you have this issue with illegal mining now, cause, because people are looking for uh, a means to uh, you know, eke, income, eke out yeah. a living. That's right. Okay. Um, having said that, do you believe that the migration of these people uh, coming in attributes to the population of uh, the illegal miners there? Absolutely. I think um, uh, illegal mining is a significant uh, draw for in migration. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, people have heard these amazing stories about how much money you can make by you know, climbing over the fence and getting into Progress Open Pit. Um, and it draws people, yeah. particularly draws people from those parts of Enga and Southern Highlands where they don't have a lot of economic activity. Okay. And that's where we were seeing the immigration coming from. And it's, I mean, it's only natural, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mineral Resources Authority, um, they, they stated that this is a serious issue. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously law and order plays a major part in alleviating the burdens of mm -hmm. these illegal miners. How is that going? It's, uh, it's, a, it's a significant challenge. I mean, it is, illegal mining is one of the biggest challenges to keeping the mine open because mm -hmm. uh, it poses a significant safety issue, not just for the illegal miners, you know, because they fall down the walls and, you know, they don't take safety precautions. Mm -hmm. uh, it's quite an unsafe area to mine. Mm -hmm. It also uh, poses a significant safety issue for our staff when there is confrontation or altercations between illegal miners and our staff. The, we've been very lucky that since the start of the year, government has been, has recognized the law and order challenges in Pogra. And they have, uh, you know, there's a state of emergency in play at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, in place at the moment, uh, where the NEC has sent both the police and army up there to, to manage the law and order situation and to address illegal mining. Uh, it's part of the reason why we've seen the legal mining numbers drop in, in Pogra over the okay. last 12 months. Uh, it's a constant, you know, challenge with trying to, ma you know, manage the situation. Okay. At the moment, thanks to the MRA, thanks to uh, the Prime Minister O'Neill and his government, there is uh, significant support on the government side to address it. The ultimate, I think, solution for it will be to develop the other areas of Eng and Southern Highlands to provide economic activity, which, okay. which can meaningfully engage the people that are currently involved in illegal mining. Just one last question before we wrap things up. What are some of the community empowerment or engagement programs that Barry Gold Corporation has ventured into? Well, one of the recent ones is our Restoring Justice program, where we're working with the government uh, to resuscitate and strengthen law and enforcement agencies in the valley and in the areas around the valley. So we're working with the magisterial services, with the PNZ Police Constabulary, uh, with the CIS beefing up their capacity in the area to actually enforce law and order. Um, and also, uh, we're supporting them through assistance with new facilities for the jails, for uh, you know, the, police, the police barracks in Pogra, mm -hmm. uh, in initiatives like that. Um, the other big thing we have, of course, is the tax credit scheme and the you know, continuing engagement with community projects. We're helping Governor Ipatas at the moment with the new Enga Teachers College. Okay. The amazing college that we're building in Wabeg uh, with, with him, you know, pursuant to his vision to turn uh, Wabeg into an educational hub. Mm -hmm. So those are two uh, really exciting projects that we're working on at the moment. Okay. Thanks again, Mr. Smare, for your time on Resource PNG. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, okay. Tukana. And that's all we have time for on this edition of Resource PNG. If you want to know more about the program, please email us. Our address, resourcepng at mtv.com.pg. You can also view this edition online by going to www.mtv.com.pg where you will find a link to the Resource PNG page. Until the next time, I'm Meribotulo and this has been Resource PNG.